So I'm in the middle of refinishing the first big project I ever made. The, uh, so far I'm not having a, a re reaction to the pine. I'm allergic to pine. It probably has to do with the fact that it's cold. I'm keeping the windows and doors open because I'm using the stripper, the paint stripper. And um, I laugh when I say that because I stripped a skateboard years ago and I used the word stripper a few times in that video and all the comments are always like making fun of that. So anyway, so again, I'm going to let the stripper do the work. I used the paint remover to uh, get rid of all of the finish, gave the everything a sanding so far. I'm not going to be able to get all the paint out because this project was distressed. We would take, uh, not, not punches, we would take awls. Usually like with two hands, just kind of in a random way. It was supposed to look wormy. And after the project was made, then we would whitewash it with uh, maybe an oil-based glaze or sometimes a latex-based. I think this one is a latex-based. And um, anyway, I'm not going to be able to get the paint out of all of those little wormholes uh, because... That would just be crazy. And I actually kind of like the way it looks. Now, this old pine has really uh, got some beautiful color to it. I love the way this is, this is looking right now. Uh, so this has been sanded to 120. And then um, right now it just has one coat of the Total Boat Halcyon on it. I just brushed it on because I wanted to see what happened to the grain when, uh, when it got some finish on it. Uh, so I just want to go over to the piece of furniture because it's on its back now and I can talk about some of the construction. It's built like a tank. This thing is so, so heavy. Uh, but you can, uh, you'll get a good idea of, of why it's so heavy when we kind of take a look at the guts. Okay, so when this thing was built, the face frame was made first and the sides were attached to the face frame. Then the bottom was dropped in and then the bottom support and then I probably started adding these shelves to support the drawers. And the way they're made is uh, they're more than likely biscuited together. And it looks like about five inch, maybe six inch uh, pieces of Luan plywood. And the frames are made and the idea there is uh, just cuts down on the weight and a little bit of the material. All right, well, fast forward to the project being finished. I did say that I wasn't having a problem with the pine. I'm allergic to pine and I spoke too soon. I ended up having, a, not bad, but my, my face got pretty itchy and it's been a few days, so it's getting better now. Uh, the reason why it didn't get too bad is because it's winter time. If I had tried to do this project in the summer when it's hot and your pores are open and the sawdust is sticking to you, I would have been a mess. So it was a good thing to get the project done now. There's also sort of a reminder to not work with pine. And so this is probably the last time I'm doing anything, except for sometimes small molding. If you go to the home stores and you need a little piece of molding, uh, it's usually pine. And uh, even if it's prime, it's primed pine. But then you're cross cutting it and it's not so bad, but I still try to avoid pine. So anyway, this project, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I think it looks good in the shop here. It's kind of a sentimental project, seeing as it was like one of my first major projects. I made it for my parents. And now I've got it in the shop here. Plus, it's just tons of great storage. And now that I, I did sand the runners in the drawers a little bit more, and I waxed the, the drawers, and the drawers just open and close. Really nice. And it's just such, such good storage. So. Happy to have it here in the shop. The fact that I had to use the original hardware, it doesn't really bother me. Uh, it was just, it kind of looked kind of, kind of like clunky with the wooden knobs. So, um, so anyway, that's it. This whole area back here uh, is really coming together as far as I'm concerned. I, I don't think everything has to be like shop furniture. It can be an eclectic mix. So I like having the painting on the back wall now. I think I'll probably start rotating art in this area of the shop. The idea of this space is as much about being a shop as also a set, uh, trying to create a space that people would want to be in. 
So next I'll be building uh, a built-in over in that corner over there that will go from wall to wall. Maybe on either side of the star or this area where I have a painting now will be clamp racks or areas for tools. Just this, this nice little area of like six and a half by 15 feet is kind of a nice space to, to kind of maybe rotate, but uh, just kind of shoot and make, make a, another place to shoot video as opposed to always by the miter station. I had a question or two about the Fuji spray system. What do I think about it? I love that thing, it's so nice. The Q5 is so quiet. I have, or I still have a uh, Eagle a Turbo, I think it's called, it's right here. Turbo Eagle Spray, and it works, but it's just piercing loud. So I'm keeping it in case I uh, build the house up in Vermont, I can bring it on location. The nice thing about a turbine spray system is you just plug it into a 110 receptacle and you're ready to spray. So definitely, um, Definitely convenient. Back in the day, I used to spray with compressed air, and that's a lot of work because you have to uh, you have to treat the air, you have to dry the air before it goes into the gun, and so you have to run your compressor. Generally, a compressor that you're going to spray with is going to have to be powered up by 220. So the idea that you can bring a turbine with you, plug it into a 110 receptacle, and start spraying is just super convenient. Uh, questions about this floor in the back here. I had a few questions, uh, a few like, uh, maybe one or two nasty comments, like why wouldn't you just make the whole floor one level? Uh, and I think when it comes to an old building like this barn, you have to consider compromise. You have to be willing to compromise. And uh, since this is, I'm the only one working in this space, so if I like it, it's good enough. Um, if I were to try to make this area level with the main shop floor, that would probably mean that I'd have to uh, break out the old foundation. So that sounds like a lot of work and that's something I don't want to do. Uh, of course, I don't want to bring up, I don't want to bring the rest of the shop floor up to this level because then I lose two and a half inches of ceiling height. In the main shop, I can stand up a, a full sheet of plywood because the ceilings are eight feet, two inches. Back here, the ceilings are just under eight feet. So it's just, um, it's a compromise I'm willing to deal with. And in fact, I may end up raising the floor another like three eighths of an inch. I'm considering going over this plywood with, uh, I would probably mill the wood myself uh, with like three eighths hardwood. And it would be really nice to do like a reclaimed wood, really kind of set this area off as its own sort of space in the shop. So that's something, it'd probably take me another year to do that, but, but I'm thinking about it, we'll see what happens. Uh, my next project, uh, which I just did a full-size drawing of, is going to be a game table. Uh, it's not going to have a checkerboard or chessboard built into it, it's going to be one that you would put a, a chest or checker or, or a backgammon board on. So it's just a small 20 inch high table that you can put a game on and it'll have a drawer for your chess pieces and your checker pieces. And it will match the cherry entrance table that I made maybe almost two years ago now. It's a very popular project, almost 400,000 views. And I sell plans to that project every week. So the idea, it's a business decision and it's also a piece of furniture I need in my house. Um, but the idea is if somebody has made that entrance table, well, there's a good chance they might want to make the gaming table. So uh, again, I'm going to make it out of cherry. And again, I'm probably going to make it using pocket hole joinery. I do get some, some uh, pushback from that. Uh, of course, I could build it with mortise and tenon, but um, I think that more people will build it if I build it with pocket hole screws. And may, you never know, maybe I'll build another version of it with mortise and tenon, but I think one of the reasons why that cherry entrance table is so popular is because it's made with pocket hole joinery. And the only people who don't like pocket hole joinery are woodworkers, and woodworkers don't buy furniture. That's my experience. And that piece of furniture is in my house, and nobody, you know, people come up to the piece of furniture and they touch it, 
but they never look under it. They never ask how it was made. Uh, it just looks like it's made with mortise and tenon. So going with that sort of idea of trying to keep things simple, uh, keep projects more approachable to uh, new woodworkers, I think it's probably a better idea to build this piece with pocket hole joinery. Uh, the last thing I'll talk about, because I think it's kind of interesting, is, is money and YouTube and sponsors. How do you get sponsors? So here's a quick little story that it's like a project that I'm going to be posting tomorrow or the next day, or a video I'm going to be posting tomorrow or the next day. So I bought a snow boat, snow blower, and I never had a snow blower. And my kids are in school now. My oldest son has graduated. So the idea of doing my whole driveway on my own is just kind of overwhelming. I've done it, but I don't enjoy doing it. And it takes the joy out of the snowstorm. So I bit the bullet this year and bought, <clears throat> bought a snowblower. I ended up buying a, a 26 inch Craftsman from Lowe's. Uh, the reason why I bought that is mainly because it was available, but I actually heard some good things about it and it worked great. So I'm happy with that. So anyway, we had a good snowstorm here about 10 inches about two weeks ago and it worked great. It was really a joy to use because I did my whole driveway, did the, path out to the barn and um, it's just nice to be able to do something and uh, and get it done. So anyway, the following day was a really nice sunny day. So of course, when I got the snowblower, I watched a bunch of videos on how to use it and how to maintain it. So the next day I thought, well, geez, I'll just make a video on how to use it and maintain it and stuff. So I shot the video. I thought, uh, I think I know who will be a sponsor for this. And it's a product that I've used in the past. You might be able to guess, and you'll know if you see the video tomorrow or the next day. Um, anyway, I reached out to them. I said, I made this video. I think it goes great with your product. It's, you know, uh, authentic content because I do use the product. And sent them some screenshots of the video. And they're like, yep, we'd love to sponsor that. So that's often how I work with clients. Uh, either I've done the project already or the project is coming up. I will reach out to, a, to the, the company or uh, manufacturer of the product that I'm going to use and see if they'll become a sponsor. So I'm going to do the same thing with this cherry table. So once I get that kind of underway, I'll start reaching out to people who I'll be using their products during that project. So anyway, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this video. Really happy to have you here on Builders Notes, this new channel. I really like this channel because it's just nice and easy to, to talk to the camera. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.